Hi, in this video, I want to talk to you about An Introduction to Mechanics by Daniel Kleppner and Robert Kollenkow. So this is the second edition of this book, and it is printed by Cambridge Press. Now, typically, Cambridge Press always produce good books, and this is no exception here. This is excellent printing, as you can see. Very nice, nicely bound hardcover, and the pages on this thing are nice and glossy. They have a glossy finish to them. So yeah, brilliant um, printing by Cambridge Press. So I've had requests to review this book, so getting right into it. This is meant to be an introduction book on classical mechanics. Now, um, to my knowledge, this book uh, was used for a class in MIT, um, 8012 I think it is, and it's nicknamed Me Mechanics for Masochists. And I mean, I can sort of understand why, because this is meant to be like an introduction book, as the title indicates, but I don't necessarily think this is an introduction book. Um, if you've never had any exposure to physics before, this is going to be a very, very hard book for you. Although if you have had some exposure to physics before, say in high school or whatever, then this book might be a good choice for you. So jumping right in. Introduction to Mechanics, second edition, Cambridge University Press by Kleppner and Colin Cowell. Okay, so chapter one, we've got vedics, vectors and kinematics, very standard. Although this chapter does go a lot more in depth to um, lots of different vector operations. So it's really rigorous with the whole dot product, cross product, really making sure you know and understand what these vector operations are. Talks, of course, about the kinematic quantities like position, velocity and acceleration. Um, and of course, constructing them using the derivatives. Um, and then it talks a little bit about Taylor series and some other stuff at the, the end here. Chapter two, Newton's laws. So again, very natural progression. Uh, pretty good chapter on Newton's laws. Talks a little bit about inertial frames, which is good. I don't see this a lot in, in some other introductory books. So it's really good to specify what type of reference frame, of course, you're considering and that there are uh, non-inertial reference frames. Next we've got forces and equations of motion. So this is a bit of a strange chapter. I feel like it goes uh, beyond what I would consider introductory. It talks a lot more about differential equations um, and viscosity. Also uses a lot more sophisticated mathematic, mathematical techniques uh, in this book. I mean, I, I mean, a lot of people wouldn't really call multivariable calculus to, to, um, particularly sophisticated, but Nevertheless, it still utilizes it in this introduction book. Next up, we've got momentum. Now, this is a bit of an interesting chapter also, because I feel like this does cover a lot more of um, more content than an introduction book typically does. For example, it covers stuff like rocket motion and momentum and the flow of mass. This is typically reserved for a second course in classical mechanics, more likely a book like Taylor. You'll first encounter stuff like rocket motion and the um, flow of mass. But in this book, it of course covers it. This is why I don't think it's um, so much of an introduction book. Yeah, so we've got some interesting topics here. We've also got momentum flux, um, all the stuff, conservation of momentum, uh, center of mass also. Next up, we've got energy. Now, this is actually, again, a little bit more advanced. Not quite on the level of Taylor's book, but definitely edging towards it. We've got the normal stuff like conservation of energy and all about potential energies but it's a lot more mathematically sophisticated than um, a typical introduction book. Of course, it even talks about um, the integral solutions to, um, as well. Over here, we've got um, even more stuff. We've got, it talks about non-conservative forces. Uh, it even talks about um, some more vector calculus here. There's uh, interesting so world energy usage here, which is quite cool. Um, it even talks about ideal gases, which is cool. So yeah, a lot more a lot more stuff here than you typically get in an introduction course. Topics and dynamics. So this is some more stuff about some small oscillations and stability and normal modes. This stuff is definitely not introduction material. You'll typically see this in a book like Taylor. Um, typically the stability and normal modes, that stuff you'll always see in, in books like Taylor. But yeah, uh, really interesting that it's covering it here. Angular momentum and fixed axis rotation. Now this is again fairly standard, uh, again very rigorous treatment. Now we've got to rigid body motion. Now this is again a more advanced topic, especially when it discusses the inertia tensor 
which is not an introduction concept at all. Um, it talks about even more advanced topics in rigid body dynamics, uh, gyroscopes. And then it talks about non-inertial reference rings and fictitious forces. This isn't even covered in 801, so yeah, very difficult. Um, much more difficult than in a normal instruction course. Central force motion. I feel like this is pretty standard, of course, but of course, as you can see here, it does discuss the orbit integral. So, a uh, tad more advanced. The harmonic oscillator. So here we get to some more advanced topics. We've got um, damped harmonic uh, oscillators, driven harmonic oscillators, um, all that kind of stuff that you'd normally see in Taylor. Then it covers the special theory of relativity. Even discusses things like the Doppler effect, all that kind of stuff, the, the Lorentz transformation, of course. Relativistic dynamics, so of course, a um, continuation of relativity. And space-time physics, of course, this is even more of a continuation. So the last few chapters, I feel like, are sort of more of like an optional thing. Uh, some courses might cover it, some might not. Um, but yeah, it covers things like world lines, uh, four vectors, and that kind of stuff. And at the end here, we've got hints, clues, and answers to selected problems. Now, this is really cool because a lot of them are just hints. And that's really cool because it um, gets you to do a lot of the work yourself instead of you just looking at full solutions. So talking about how well this book is written, I feel like this is a very well-written book. Um, let's get into one of the chapters. Uh, let's have a look. So as we can see, there's plenty and plenty of different examples. Uh, this is the sort of gray colored boxes. They're all different examples. The book is very well written. It uses good notation. It's, it can be a little bit wordy at times, but I suppose um, in different sections, you'll get more wordy things than others. Diagrams are pretty good, but overall it's um it's it's a pretty well written book, although it is quite rigorous. It does utilize a lot of mathematics, so I feel like this book is a lot more mathematically uh, inclined than most uh, introduction physics books on mechanics. As you can see here, we're talking about uh, rockets and the uh, continuous loss of mass. So as you can see, it fully utilizes. Uh, the differential equations of such, solving the um, rocket equation. So yeah, definitely some more in-depth stuff. I would highly recommend this book for a lot of reasons. Um, if, as I said, if you have had an exposure to uh, mechanics before and just physics in general, this book is excellent because it really, because uh, it really gives you a concrete foundation uh, of mechanics. So it gives you the ability to work up in physics and. Um, get to more advanced classes. So this will give you a really, really solid foundation. Talking about the problems in this book, um, let's have a look. So it starts, okay, here we go. So a lot of the problems in this book I actually really like. Um, they sort of range from pretty easy to quite hard, but they're, they're generally pretty insightful, I find. The problems are, are good. They're um, pretty insightful. I like them. They're fun to do. They're, they're definitely harder than your typical book, but I mean, that's sort of expected by now. Um, so yeah, if you do want some challenging sort of problems, uh, they, some of them are pretty standard, but they're definitely challenging and they're definitely fun to work on. So even if you just go through a bunch of these just in your spare time, just to keep sharp with a lot of your physics, then this book is good. It does have a lot of good problems and per chapter, it does have quite a few. See, this chapter's got 27, 19, so it sort of ranges. But they're all really interesting problems, cool problems to work on, really enjoy them. And of course, as I said, the back of the book has um, hints, uh, hints and clues and some answers to the selected exercises. And I really like this because having full solutions is a bonus, but at the same time, it's really nice to just be able to work on problems and have hints if you need them, but not be tempted by the full solutions. So as you can see, it's not very long. It just got a few selected questions per chapter where it will, might give you a hint or an answer, but it will not show you all the working. So overall, I think if you've had an introduction to mechanics and you want to have a really solid foundation in classical mechanics, this book is, I think it's excellent. Um, if you combine this with a book like Taylor, you'll definitely be doing really well. This book is really good. I highly recommend it. And thank you for watching this video.